Welcome to the Diversity Report podcasts, where we interview diverse change makers and innovators. I'm Deborah Levine, editor of the American Diversity Report and your host. And with me today is Yannick Woodall, who is head of brand communications, product innovation PR, and social impact communications at Home Depot. Additionally, she serves as treasurer for the PRSA Foundation, an independent charitable organization committed to promoting diversity within the PR industry. Yannick graduated with her master's in corporate and public communications from Seton Hall University and serves as an adjunct professor at George Washington University. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking with me today and thank you for the warm introduction. It's a pleasure, a pleasure to meet you. I'm looking forward to hearing your take on what are some of the main diversity and inclusion challenges facing the PR industry these days. There must be quite a few. Yes, yes, they are. We're, we're, but there definitely are. And the diversity and inclusion challenges that we're seeing in PR are similar to the challenges that are in other industries, um, from unconscious bias to, um, to the talent pipeline, diverse employee retention. These are all some part of what's attributed to the lack of senior championships to help create opportunities uh, for junior level employees. Mm. What are we going to do about this? What specific actions that can help change diversely challenged organizations can you recommend? Absolutely. I think it's a five point scale that you should think about. One of the things we talk about is acknowledge the challenges at hand. We don't have all the answers. No one has all the answers, but being attentional, I think is important about finding the right resources and being open to making an investment, whether it's financially or time wise in advancing diversity and inclusion within the organization to help address challenges that are facing our profession. The second is to do a gut check. You know, check your bias at the door. Your bias, whether conscious or unconscious, has a direct impact on your communications and the relationships that you have with your colleagues in the workplace. I always say, look around the table. Does everyone look like me? So what that means is, does everyone look like you? Does everyone work in the same department as you? Are there different perspectives represented? Or do, you, do your voices uh, have the same mindset? Can you look at the strategy and tactics through a different lens? Representation all around matters a great deal. Be intentional about where you source your talent. Make conscious efforts to incorporate the best practices in your organization's recruiting efforts that attract diverse talent. Recruit and build relationships with specific universities where multicultural attendance is high. Um, support and sponsor networking events that attract diverse professionals and market your company at these events as a prospective employer. I know at the at the Home Depot, we do that a great deal. Be courageous and have courageous conversations. The more authentic and sometimes uncomfortable conversations um, we have, the more we can unearth some of the challenges many individuals are face. Um, and create meaningful change. Well, that's quite a list uh, and it's wonderful, but very extensive. Who will be in charge of doing this? Who should be? Leaders within an organization are absolutely responsible for creating and fostering a diverse and inclusive environment, but it's not just up to them. This should be filtered down into the organization for the most um, for the, your most senior leaders to your most junior employees. It needs to be embedded in the culture. If it's coming from your senior leaders, then it becomes a part of the fabric and the DNA of the culture. And that changes the mindset of everyone and that filters into the way that we're having conversations and also the way that we are operating as an organization. How, how are we going to hold these leaders accountable beyond just uh, the nice words? Oh, very good point. Um, 
In terms of accountability, leaders should be visible and vocal on what their diversity plans are. They should always set clear metrics and celebrate the milestones. We always forget to celebrate the milestones. So everyone is knowledgeable about what we're doing, what we're invested in, and what our journey is ahead. Excellent, excellent. And I understand that the PRSA Foundation is doing quite a bit to make sure that all this happens, yes? Yes, so about a year ago, we launched Diverse Voices. And it is a profile in leadership. Uh, it can be found at diverseleadership.net. It is a collaborative effort that was supported by leading entities in the communications industry designed to help professionals better understand the challenges faced by diverse professionals in the field. The book features about 40 diverse corporate communications and PR agency leaders who share candid anecdotes detailing the successes and challenges they have faced during their career, as well as insights that can help others who are up and coming in, the, uh, in their careers. It's the first project uh, by PRSA Foundation, and, um, and we are looking forward to continuing to have events around diverse voices so that we can further have the discussion around diversity and inclusion within the industry. Wonderful. Uh, tell us how people can uh, look at uh, the events that you're doing and find out uh, if there's something close to them that they can attend. Absolutely. So if anyone is interested in finding out more information about the PRSA Foundation or any of our upcoming events, they should visit www.prsafoundation.org. Excellent. This is quite an undertaking for you professionally and personally, I'm sure. Would you like to share with us how you got into this field of diversity and inclusion? So diversity and inclusion, I hold uh, very close to my heart, and I believe in the importance of it, not only within uh, the workplace, but also in associations and, and, and different groups that I'm in working on projects. Uh, there are two reasons why I continue to focus on it. One is my own personal journey. I feel that part of it, uh, the things that I've been able to achieve, the milestones within my career has been based on obviously working hard and, and and studying very hard. But the second is uh, having others who have been senior to me that saw the importance of diversity and inclusion within the communications industry and have helped me along the way navigate through some challenges. And with the work that I am privileged and honored to do with the PRSA Foundation, I have the chance to help others do the same. And I see that you have an interest in in helping young people, students, wannabes, uh, by your uh, adjunct professorship at George Washington University. Can you tell us a little bit about what you teach? So I teach on the graduate level for George Washington University, uh, a master's in strategic communication. And it's, it's an enjoyable experience and the opportunity to bring what we're doing in the industry into the classroom and online. And it's for individuals that have um, a four-year degree in communications but have decided that they want to advance their career and, and master um, in the corporate and public communications area. That is wonderful. So tell us what kind of uh, words of wisdom can you give us and others who are looking at the diversity and inclusion aspect of communication? What should I we be thinking? So words of advice for, for anyone who is beginning their, their career, uh, be, be intentional, be hungry, have a natural curiosity and be flexible in your thinking. Be very open to opportunities and conversations. Uh, that's wonderful, and I imagine it comes from personal experience, does it not? Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. Um, I, I've had the privilege to um, meet many people within the industry that have become uh, great mentors, uh, wonderful colleagues, and, and good friends. 
No, that is wonderful to hear. I'm delighted that people have taken you under their wing and that you are passing along that um, special privilege of doing so. Tell us again, once more, how we can look at what the PRSA Foundation is doing. For anyone who's interested in the PRSA Foundation or to find out about upcoming initiatives or events, please visit www.prsafoundation.org. And again, how can they get the book that you've been working with? Yes, um, to obtain a copy of Diverse Voices, Profiles in Leadership, individuals should visit diverseleadership.net. Wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add that we haven't covered yet? Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you and to share the work that we're doing with the PRSA Foundation with your listeners. Oh, thank you for, for coming and joining our podcast. It's been a pleasure to hear from you uh, and uh, what uh, you, are, you are doing in this field, which is so important and vital to all of us. Uh, yeah. Thanks again, and I hope that we will keep in touch. Thank you. Great. And thank you, audience, for tuning in once again. We look forward to having you join us in the near future.